Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Survival Minecraft Let's Play with your host, Zakari, here. I gotta tell you something. This chest monster you can see behind me is getting a little bit out of control. And if we look over here, we could see that we just have a bunch of chests with a bunch of random stuff. Some of it's sorted. I've tried to keep this stuff sorted, but it is a mess to go back with the full inventory of a bunch of stuff and try to put it away. So for this episode, I really want to build an automatic uh, sorting system. It's going to have the hoppers, lots of redstone, all that good stuff. I want to build it somewhere, right? And I think the best place for a sorting system would be lower down in my base. So I've mentioned I want to make this a volcano. And I think down at the bottom we can have some like lava and maybe a little bit of like gold or something and then kind of style our storage system around that and kind of have different rooms. Maybe we do a similar ring pattern as what we did up here. But I think the other thing is I'm going to have a lot of digging to do this episode and I don't want it to take forever. And so that brings us to the nether here. So you might be wondering why we're here and it's because we need to get some wither skulls because we are going to make a beacon. Now I don't know about you but for me this is actually the first series that I've made it this far in the game in a long time. Uh, I usually don't have the patience to keep a Minecraft world long enough to get to this point in the game. It definitely helps that I'm doing this recording because it makes me have another goal each time that I create an episode and I just get to kind of build this world with all of you. So pretty much my strategy is going to be to just kind of explore this and um, just do my best to not die in the process I guess. Um, <laughs> I have a looting three sword, so hopefully I don't have to kill too many of these wither skeletons before we can get the three skulls we need. Because right now we're on, oh, wow, all right. Second wither skeleton of the day, and I've already gotten one head. This is, this might be a lot easier than I was thinking. Now I'm totally sure you would absolutely love to just watch me running around a fortress for forever, but I am just going to show you some of the highlights. While I'm here in this fortress, I can kind of improve the amount of blazes and wither skeletons that spawn by like connecting all of these bridges. And as long as you build with nether brick, any space inside of the like overall borders can spawn blazes or wither skeletons. It doesn't have to be where the original stuff is. Not only will there be more uh, wither skeletons, but hopefully this will make it easier to get around the fortress as well. And now we're back to just killing some skeletons. And with that, we have all three Wither Skeleton Skulls. Now we are good to go. And now after a quick pit stop at the base, I grabbed some soul sand and some obsidian. And now let's pop on over to the end. And so this is definitely not the most straightforward route. I didn't make this path quite as nice as I made some of the others, but it should still get us there. I'm not sure if you've heard of this or if this is the first time you'll be seeing this, but in the end, underneath the end portal, you can, uh, if you summon a wither in the right spot, it won't be able to escape and you can easily just trap it there and hit it with your sword. I think this would also work on like the nether ceiling or something, but this is going to be the easiest, I think, and just the most reliable way. So maybe as I get more later on in this series, we can always get more beacons pretty easily that way. So from here, it should be pretty simple. I just plop this down, make our little T-shape, 
that's just to remember how to make it because I think we should be able to reuse this exact shape for our next wither. This is actually really scary. Okay, and this is really loud. And I'm just gonna swing the sword. And this feels too easy. I'll take it though, not complaining. There we go. And I guess uh, with her head too. <laughs> All right, so there's our nether star. Okay, well that was easier than I thought it would be. And then, boop, we are back at home. Super quick trip. And now we have our nether star, which means with some obsidian. Oh, I said with some obsidian. I, never mind, I just grabbed that from the lava lakes down below. We should now be able to make... I forgot the glass too. Okay, with all of that, we should now be able to make our beacon! Oh, that's so amazing. I'm so happy now. So now this ladder is kind of the center of my base, so I think for now, I'm also just going to shoot the beacon beam up through it. Might be a little tough with the lava here. Alright, some slight obsidian clearing later. <laughs> 61 of them. Uh, that's not actually too bad, I guess, but... This entire side is obsidian. This entire side is obsidian. Uh, anyways, now it's just a matter of building in the pyramid itself. And so this part is actually a lot of fun just placing down some mineral blocks. And I'll tell you what, it was a great idea to have the iron farm going before I did this episode, because now I have tons of iron. This was not a big problem at all. Uh, did I do something wrong? Does it, does it just work? Yes, there we go. Oh, this is so sick. Haste two. And now, when we go all the way up, this is going to take a little bit of time. And now I think this means I should have insta mine of all of this. Oh, this is amazing. This is going to be a game changer for the rest of our base. So I think you know what that means. This is time for a super fast time lapse of me doing some more digging. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and wow, did that take a lot of time. I know you probably couldn't see it, but this was about 16 hours again. So basically the instant mine just allowed me to do a much bigger project than I would have done otherwise. But uh, anyways, this base just looks so cool. I am, I think it's going to really turn out well once we get to being able to decorate it. 
Um, but first, we now need a way to get around here, because the ladder in the middle is not convenient at all. And so I'm thinking some bubble columns would be pretty cool. Um, those are pretty fast as well, because um, we have a lot of height to cover here. There we go, that's so cool. And then, whoop. And then I can just move it one in and go the next level up. So that's pretty cool. So now we'll just repeat this everywhere. And if we do a little twist, and here we go. All the bubble columns are in, and now they take us from the bottom, super fast, right up to our villagers. So now I'm wondering where do we want to build our storage system? And so I'm thinking it would be really cool. Good thing I have feather falling. Um, it'd be really cool to kind of build it similar to how we did that layer up there where it goes in a little bit. I was thinking we could do the same thing for our storage system. And I think this is a perfect height for it because it'll be a lot easier to get back and forth from the village and stuff like that. Now that we have cleared our space, it's time to build all of the item sorters. So far I have this much uh, chest made. I'm, I think I'm probably going to need several stacks of each. And I can tell you this iron farm is totally amazing. Um, while I was doing all the digging here, it's just been chugging away. And this is what I mean. Wow, this is ridiculous. Um, just gonna take all, as much as I can. Anyways, here we go. And this should give us over two stacks of hoppers. And now we are gonna need a lot of chests. And for just getting some wood, the jungle trees are perfect because they give you a lot per tree and it's pretty easy to get a bunch of wood this way. And after mining about four or five trees, we have plenty of wood to make all the chests we're going to need for this sorting system. Now for all the redstone components, I hope this is enough redstone to make all of that. And we can't forget the quartz. Now we have all of our redstone bits crafted up. There's just one last thing we need to do. Um, we need to go get some ice. We're going to need some ice for the water streams. I'm thinking I'm just going to kind of explore the oceans and uh, see how that turns out. I know we're in a warm spot, so we're probably gonna have to go fairly far. Those are some cool mountains. Frogs. Oh, these are so cool. I, oh, I should totally make some sort of farm with them or the, do the frog lights or maybe just add them to an aquarium or something cool in the base. For sure, you'll have to let me know in the comments if there's something in particular you would love for me to do. Um, I definitely need to do some more 1.19 stuff. Can I take them home? What do they eat? How do you breed frogs? Okay, let me check the wiki. Oh, so they, they need slime balls. That's interesting. But, um... That'll have to be a thing for another day. I, I don't want to get too distracted here. <laughs> well, I found a mountain and it looks pretty cool, but I feel like there might just be some snow up top. Yep, there's just snow. So we're going to have to find another one. I can see pretty far, but I don't see anything that I'm looking for. This is a tiny patch of snow. I guess I keep going further. And shortly after, here's another ocean. So hopefully this will lead us somewhere. That looks more like it. Giant mountains. Perfect. Okay. 
Yep, this is what I'm looking for. And I can see all the all this ice, which will be perfect for us so we can make the storage system. And we probably won't have to come back here for a little while. While I'm here, I feel like I got to get a goat horn, though. At least one, right? So I think this should be pretty easy. You just have to get them to charge at you and then dodge it. And then you should be able to get a goat horn, right? Oh, this is just packed ice. I thought this was the blue ice. That's alright. This is perfect. Now just to get that goat horn. Do goats just not ram people? Oh! I literally just jumped out of my chair right there. <laughs> this looks suspicious. Oh! Okay, this is way harder than I thought it would be. Just hit me. Do it. Oh! oh. How am I never ready to dodge these? I am not giving up on this goat horn, but I will totally tell you I'm definitely practicing this in a creative world, so it's a lot faster for me to see what's going to work. So here's my creative test world. I built a box with some pretty high walls so the goats can't jump out. What? I wonder if the ice doesn't work or something, because that... That should have dropped a horn, I think. Yes! Nice. Okay. Alright, so now I know the hang of it. Let's go do this in our survival world. Right, so I don't have any stone, but I have some logs. So let's see if that works. Unfortunately, because there's... Only a couple goats nearby, I think. This might take a little while. This guy looks promising. Yes! Yes! Finally! And I have too much stuff, of course. Okay, that's pretty cool. I feel like there's better sounds out there, but this will have to do for now. I was totally going to just cut to when I was back home, but on the way back, I noticed this cool thing. Just a floating island with some trees on it. And I feel like it's pretty rare to see something like this in the world. All right, back home. And uh, overall, I feel like that was a pretty good trip. The goats took a lot longer than I thought, but the good news is now we have plenty of ice. We can actually get started on building out all of the um, item sorters and everything now. So that's super exciting. So I'm actually going to start on this side. And that's just because over here up on this side is where I have the uh, tunnel and stuff. So I think that'll make it a little bit easier to tie up uh, later. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this right. Um, some repeaters and then... I believe this is then going to have the torches on the back of the repeaters. And then behind that, we'll have some chests. And this will be where all the items end up. On top of our chests, we'll have hoppers. So I place my blocks on top of here. I think I can block these off too. We need the comparators. And then these need these hoppers need to point into the comparators. Boom. And then one last thing, the redstone dust. That needs to go all through there and now we have all of the redstone in there so this should be functional if we use the arrows as our filler this should now start sorting the items from the stack that we put in the first slot and now 
And now as the items flow above, this hopper will only be able to pick up the packed ice. Now here comes the fun part. I just got to place a bunch of water buckets in here so we have a consistent channel. And there we go. Now the water is all in. I think this is an opportunity to add a splash of color in. So similar to what I did with the village up above, we can use some of the terracotta and concrete to really use the same colors again and just add a little bit of a divider between each group of eight. Yeah, there we go. I think that looks pretty nice. Hmm, I wonder if the spruce trapdoors will work right. It's gonna look weird. No, I think that looks good. So now I'm wondering how am I gonna show which item is in each chest? And I could totally put an item frame on the front of each chest, but that's gonna make it a little bit harder to use. So I wonder if I can like put a block below each one representing the items that are in it. The setup for each of these is pretty easy. You just add an item to the first slot and then item filter on the second. I just named the paper this. You could probably use any name as long as you're not going to have those items going through your water stream. So I, I set up a bunch of the sorters. And now this is what I did not imagine is I've set up sorters for quite a few items. This entire row is completely used and I still have to come up with spots for all the other items. So I'm going to have to build this again uh, going around the bend. Before I do that though, I want to have some of the items that we've already added sorters for, we can just um, dump a bunch of items into a chest and they will all be sorted for us. And there we go. This should now start spitting out all the items that are in the dispenser so we can just fill the chest and all these items are passing right through the system. And the nice part about using the water is that we can see the items going across and then actually ending up filling up this chest right here. I wanna just give you a quick progress update. I built a whole nother one of these and I've added a sorter for all of the items so far and I totally thought this would be enough but um, I have used every single one of these slots and there's quite a few items that are spilling out the back so we're gonna need some more slots for storage but I'm gonna be working on those next time we also still need to set up uh, some sort of bulk storage for a lot of these I items that I have just an absolute ton of I think those are going to involve shulker boxes though, so I will save that for next episode. Speaking of next episode, that is all that I have time for for this episode. But here we are at the top. I just wanted to show you how much progress we have made this episode. It has been insane. We did all of this digging all the way down to the abandoned mine shaft. We can see we have a lot of space to work with in the future, just a ton, and that's going to be amazing. I'm thinking we can have so many cool farms dotting the edges here. Here's our village, and then underneath that is our storage system that we built this episode. So this has been a great episode, and uh, thank you all for watching all the way to the end. And if you liked it, make sure to subscribe for more videos. This has been your host, Sakari, and I'll catch you next time.